What's up, guys? I'm just gonna apologize for the quality of this up front. Yeah, got my lighting effects back here. But anyways, today we're gonna talk about pros and cons of being flat rate. Um, most of y'all don't even know me. Uh, I work at a Chevrolet dealership as a line tech. We get paid flat rate, or other people call it commission. But to, but we gotta separate the difference. To me, commission means you're making a base pay and then you're getting paid a certain amount for every service provided after that. On flat rate, I'm not making anything unless I'm turning wrenches. And just a couple examples of what flat rate is and what it pays, a simple oil change and tire rotation at our dealership pays 0.5 hours. So that means in order to turn 40 hours, you'd have to do 80 oil changes and tire rotations, which is why it makes it really hard to be a flat rate lube tech at the rates they want to pay you. So once you move up into the flat rate realm of, you know, doing tech work, you know, you get the hang of how to beat book time so you can, instead of, say something pays two hours, takes you an hour to do it now, say you make $20, instead of getting paid $20 an hour, you just made $40 an hour because you did it twice as fast. But the whole time in between when you're not you don't have a car in your bay and you're not turning wrenches on it or make it programming, doing whatever, you're not making any money at all. Which, you know, that, that sets the basis for what is flat rate. So the pros of being flat rate are you build your own paycheck. And when you're not busy, the boss can't really come by and tell you, oh, you need to be cleaning the floors, you need to be doing this, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not getting paid by them. Your job is to simply work on cars. You get paid to work on cars. That's it. So if you're not busy, now, by no means does that mean when you're not busy working, you just get to sit on your ass and do nothing. By no means is that what that means. That means whenever you're not turning wrenches, you get to do things that benefit you, like organizing, cleaning your toolbox, cleaning your work area. You don't have to go out and clean other people's. That's You don't get paid to do that. You clean your work area, you organize your tools so you can be more efficient. Now... More pros of it, other than you get to build your own paycheck. That means you don't feel like working that hard that day. You turn four or five hours. That's gravy. That's nothing. But you, you say, say you have a really big expense coming up that week. You can go into work with the mindset, I'm going to turn 16 hours today. And you can do it. 16 hours is not hard by any means to do. I mean, a simple mountain balance four tires, that's two hours right there. It shouldn't take you more than 45 minutes an hour unless you get some Corvette wheels or something stupid. But yeah, you can build your own paycheck. You can work however hard you want to work. You can work as easy as you want to work. I mean, you get to build your own paycheck, but it can come back to bite you in the ass. At the end of the week, you get $130 and you only turn 15 hours that week. That sucks, man. That's your fault. Now, the cons are, if it's really slow, you're not making any money. If there's no cars there to be worked on, you're not making any money. But the plus side of working at a dealership is when it's super slow, you go up front to your service advisors, you know, your service manager, you say, hey, are there any lot cars, need recalls, anything done like that? They'll go through all the cars on the lot. You might get a full day worth of work doing recalls on lot cars. So, I mean, there's pros and cons to being flat rate. Now, the worst thing about being flat rate to me is getting screwed, man. Warranty time. Uh, for instance, uh, I did a torque converter on an Escalade four-wheel drive. It book time is eight and a half hours, but with warranty, we have to flush the cooler lines, flush the transmission three, four times before we can ever replace the torque converter. But that gets added into our torque converter replacement time. So all together, once you get done getting your flush codes, all that, you replace the torque converter, you get paid seven hours. That's not seven hours worth of work. Replacing the torque converter alone pays 8.5 by itself. You got to flush each time where you got to drop the pan. That's an extra hour. So you're doing about 10, 11 hours, and you're getting paid 7. I mean, it's not fair, but it's part of it's part of being a flat rate tech. Warranty's going to happen if you're at a dealership. You can avoid that by going to a private shop or anything like that. Another instance where you might get screwed by warranty even on a gravy job, say it's a reprogram a radio, it pays like six tenths. A lot of times the radios will lock up, and before you can even call tech or tack or anything, 
you have to let it sit there for an hour. You're not getting paid for that hour, but it's in your bay and you're consciously working on it. You lose that hour, and then if the radio comes back, it's got to be replaced, you're replacing the radio, and then you have to reprogram it again. You're only getting paid to program it once, though. So you're losing time if something like that happens. So basically, you just got to pray that it doesn't lock up. But if it locks up, your day just went to shit quick. Now, I guess that's basically all the cons of being flat rate is you get screwed by warranty. Well, hold on, there might be another one. This applies at some shops. Say a car comes in and a bolt or fastener breaks or something. You have to extract that bolt because your job's not complete until it is back together the way it came in and you've completed the repair. See, some shops, you break the fastener, that's your ass, you're losing time. My shop, I'm lucky enough, I just have to look at bolts. If they're rusty, I can tell them, hey, this bolt might break, or hey, this car is really rusty, some stuff might break. That covers my ass, and then we end up charging the customer if bolts break, which I know to some people are going to argue, oh, that's not fair, that's not fair, but let's get real, it is fair. It's not my fault you come in with a rust bucket car, and I try to take it apart, and bolts start snapping. It's not fair, I gotta sit there for two hours drilling out bolts, breaking taps, breaking extractors, breaking everything, then drilling those out again. I'm not getting paid if I break my extractor, but if that bolt breaks, I'm getting paid. I'm not gonna sit there and fucking drill a hole for fucking an hour and a half, trying to get some vice grips, bust out the oxyacetylene torch, heat this shit up. I'm not, I would quit my job, they told me how to do that for free. I'm just being real with you here. Because I understand flat rate, we get paid for repairs, not for fucking off but I'm not getting paid or I'm not gonna have a job where I'm not making money because someone doesn't know how to fucking put anti seize on their fucking rotor screws and shit and shit's breaking off you know what I'm saying but other than that being flat rate is easy easy money you, there's no limit to how much you can make in a year put it this way I was a lube tech um, December of last year, it's November of 2017 now, I was still a lube tech making $8 an hour. I proved myself, day I, even before I graduated tech school in February, when I co-opted, I went from 8 to $12 an hour. Now, you think about that, now it's November, I've been flat rate for like three months now. I'm making, I don't want to say exact amount, but I'm making more than almost more than double what I was making as a loop taste <laughs> my dog Zeus so you do the math on that you just we'll just call it 20 flat we'll just say 20 flex that's what a lot of flat rate takes get paid you say 20 times 40 that's decent living each week now there's no you can turn 50 60 hours in a week easy easy so you do 20 times 60 and most shops have a thing where if you go above a certain amount of hours you get paid a couple dollars more per hour going all the way back to the first hour because remember when you're flat rate you don't get paid overtime because you're not getting paid by the hour so as soon as you turn 40 hours you're not making time and a half it doesn't work like that you're still making whatever you make unless your dealership or shop has an incentive to where if you turn this many hours you make a couple dollars more per hour all the way back to hour number one so you can make an ass load of money on flat rate the only the only place I would want to be hourly is at a job where it's slow. Like, say, uh, you're working at a factory or something else as maintenance on the vehicles. You know, odds are there's not gonna need, they're not going to need engine rebuilds, alternator replacements every day, every week, blah, blah, blah. You know, you're going to be doing oil changes, greasing fittings, adjusting steering wheels and shit, make them straight. It's just part of life, man. That's the only time I would want to be hourly as a tech. On flat rate, I'm making more money than what I need to live. And if I want more than that, I have the opportunity to make more than that. I go into work with the mindset, hey, I need money this week. Knock cars out left and right. And being flat rate, you can also recruit the lube techs. You can farm your work out to them. Like, we have a lube tech there. I've taught how to do recalls. I'm like, hey, you do these recalls for me, these reprograms. Put them in my number. I'll clock time on them for warranty and all that. I'll pay you $2 for every hour you turn for me. So they're making their hourly rate plus my $2 for whatever they turn for me. And you can do three, four of these recalls in an hour. So they're making money. I'm making money. And meanwhile, I'm still turning hours on what's in my bay. I got two bays, and if they're empty, I'm pissed. 
Because if they're empty, you can't pay bills with no cars. So recruit the lube techs. Be like, hey, I mean, don't do it if your boss is going to get pissed off. But if you can, just recruit the lube techs. Be like, hey, I'll farm y'all some work. I'll pay you. You put it in my number. I get the hours for it. We're good to go. So there's more than one way to make money flat rate. But a lot of people, it just scares. Because they, if they're at work, they want to get paid. They want to know what they're making that week. Even though they know they can make more money than what they were making by just going in there and working. As long as you're working, you're fine. Nobody's going to bat an eye or anything. I mean, even if you just want to sit around for one day, as long as you turn 40 hours that week, nobody's going to say anything to you. So, like, instance, last week I was sick. I was sick as hell. I sat at my box one whole day, just sat there, did a couple oil changes and shit just to help everybody out. But I just sat there because I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to work. But I don't call out of work, so they already knew. Case don't feel good, he's just going to sit there. Nobody said anything to me. I still turned 51 hours that week. But uh, that's about it, guys. That's the pros and cons of being flat rate, and it's not that bad, man. If y'all have any questions about being flat rate or you're about to go flat rate or you, you're thinking about getting into the automotive industry, you have any questions about how pay works, flat rate, commission, and then some places have teams, uh, just ask me. I'll make a video about it. I'll even shout you out. Just make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell next to it so you get a video or a notification when I upload a video. And I'll be more than willing to help y'all. But uh, things to look forward to is I'm about to do a tool haul video for my home toolbox. So it's not going to be anything to snap on. But uh, I did get a top box for my work box. As y'all saw in my last video, the 72-inch Harbor Freight. That is my work box. I got a top box for it. And it's about full already, and I bought a lot more snap-on shit. Shit, I probably shouldn't have spent that much money on, but I did. So, just hit subscribe, like, notification bell, wherever that's at, next to the subscribe, I believe, so you get notifications when I upload videos, because I will be doing a 50 subscriber giveaway, so stay tuned for that, guys. Peace out.